invite welcome the next uh, speaker our next uh, talk is the keynote uh, talk by professor uh, joseph rosen and he will present on uh, advanced uh, imaging methods using coded aperture digital holography and before we start so let us uh, know more about the biography of uh, professor joseph rosen so professor joseph rosen is also my postdoctoral advisor so i'm really glad that he's here now he is from ben gurion university of the negev and he is currently visiting us uh, at university of tartu okay so, daniel, daniel so, so would you like you... to yes absolutely um if i may say a little bit um professor joseph rosen is a benjamin h swig university uh, professor of optoelectronics with the school of electrical and Compu uh, computer engineering uh, of the Ben Gwynn University of Negev, Israel. He received his BSc, MSc, and DSc degrees in electrical engineering from the Tenyon in Israel Institute of Technology in 1984, 1987, and 1992, respectively. He is a fellow of Optica, which is formerly the uh, Optical Society of America, and the International Society of Optical Engineering. His research interests include digital holography, optical microscopy, diffractive optics, interferometry, statistical optics, biomedical optics, optical com computing, and imaging and image processing. He has co-authored more than 250 book chapters, scientific journal articles, patents, and conference publications. Okay, thank you very much. So let us now have in listen to the talk. Professor Joseph Good Rosen, please. Good morning. Do you hear me? Yes. And do you see my presentation? Okay. Okay, so good morning. Uh, thank you for the nice introduction and for inviting me to this, uh, to giving uh, this uh, keynote. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, coded aperture uh, digital holography. And as an introduction, I want to present the uh, advanced model of computer computational imaging uh, in which uh, the coded aperture digital holography is uh, one method of this uh, model or this uh, optical coding. So in this model, uh, people introduce uh, a mask in an optical uh, imaging system, shown here as a, a, this camera, but it can be a microscope or telescope or any, any imaging system. And uh, beyond the image sensor, there is an intermediate image, which is different. It's not the exact replica of, uh, of the scene. And this intermediate image is processed by, by the computer and the output is, uh, is shown here. And it has uh, features that are uh, superior uh, comparing uh, in comparison to the uh, imaging system without uh, the, co the optical coding. And the goals of, of uh, this uh, advanced model uh, are shown here in, in this, this uh, two, uh, these four arrows. Uh, we want to improve or extend the information dimension. For instance, to go from a 2D image to 3D image or from intensity image to phase image. And People want to improve the uh, resolution and there are uh, three types of resolution, spectral resolution, when people want to resolve the finest uh, spectral line, temporal resolution, when we try to uh, minimize the exposure time, and special resolution, when people uh, try to resolve as uh, the uh, finest uh, detail for, from the image. And 
Today I'm going to talk mainly on uh, extending the information dimension and on uh, improving the special resolution. And uh, in this slide we see the historical, uh, the history of uh, holography for imaging. So it is divided to four quarters. Uh, we have coherent and incoherent uh, illumination of the observed uh, Im uh, objects. And we, we have a optical hologram and, and digital hologram, optical hologram is reconstructed optically, where a digital hologram is reconstructed by a computer. And uh, the history started with the Gabor hologram, shown here, uh, the, reconstruction, the, the recording setup. Uh, this hologram published in 1948 by uh, Delis Gabor. And uh, the reconstruction of this hologram suffered uh, from the uh, famous uh, twin image problem, where uh, two images are focused on the same line of sight in uh, two uh, different uh, distances from the viewer. And in 1962, uh, Wyth and Eupatniks solve this uh, uh, twin image problem by introducing an angle between the reference and the object beams in the recording setup shown here. And in the reconstruction, we can see that if the hologram is reconstructed by a plane wave, the viewer see only the virtual image and the real image goes in a different direction out of the of his eyes and when we go to the digital holography which is our topics today so the first digital hologram uh, published by uh, goodman and lower lawrence in 1967 and here we see the recording setup of yamaguchi Zhang on axis digital hologram published in uh, 1997. And they solved the, the image problem, uh, the twin image problem by introducing a phase shifting in the reference beam. And they recorded uh, four holograms and by uh, superposition of these four holograms in the computer, they got only the virtual image or the real image according to the, the parameters. And when we move to an uh, incoherent digital hologram, we uh, see that since 1985, the optical scanning hologram uh, published by TC Poon, and the system is shown here. He used heterodyne uh, interferometer to solve the twin image problem, and also used XY scan, scanner and scan the, the, inter, the interference pattern on the object. So the process is, uh, uh, is, is uh, slow because of the scanning. And our com contribution started in uh, two, 2007, by proposing a Fresnel incoherent correlation hologram, Finch. And this, this hologram uh, was without any scanning. And uh, it was a, a integration of two ideas, the self-reference hologram proposed by Stroke and Restrick in uh, 1965, and the phase shifting of uh, Yamaguchi junk. So let's start for, uh, with uh, uh, Finch, and I jump to 
2013, when we uh, introduced the Finch, the first Finch fluorescence microscope shown here. And we have here a TLC green transparent liquid crystal graded index lens, actually this lens, lens two, which take uh, the wave from each point, split it to two waves. Uh, one orthogonal polarization is focused before the camera, camera one in the red line. And the other orthogonal polarization is focused beyond the hologram. And since these two waves are originated from the same point, they are mutual uh, coherent and we get interference on the camera one. And this is actually the, the Finch hologram of a single point. And when we have a collection of points, object of uh, collection of points, we get the complete Finch hologram. In camera one, the phase shifting is, uh, is achieved by liquid crystal wave plates shown here. And in camera two, we get a wide feed regular uh, image of a microscope and camera one, we get the Finch hologram. So let's see the results. Here we see a wide field image recorded in camera two. And we all can see uh, one particle in focus here, number one. And to see uh, the other particle, we have to move the objective uh, mechanically. But when we take the hologram in camera one, in the computer, by changing the Z parameter in the back, uh, Fresnel back propagation integral, we can see particle one in focus, number two in focus in the other image, and number three in focus in the third image. And also, we discovered the, the, the resolution of Finch is better by 50% than the resolution of the white field image. And we can see it here in the visibility across one of the, the finest uh, grating shown here. And the visibility of Finch is better. And the reason for that is that Finch violates the uh, Lagrange invariant. And so uh, I don't have time to explain it here, but uh, I, can, uh, I can explain it later in the question uh, uh, session. And OK, so if we move to 2014, to the regular Finch shown here, uh, we see here the two images of, of Finch. In the First image, we introduced another special light modulator to do a sectioning, to eliminate the out of focus image and to get a single image that is focused, uh, focused in, in A1, in plane A1. And on the second SLM, we put a phase mask and scan the phase, uh, sorry, we put a, a phase pinhole shown here. And this phase pinhole, uh, we scan all the plan. And by creating phase shifting relation between the two images, A1 and A2, only the image that is in this plan uh, remain. The images before the plan and beyond the plan are eliminated from the final image. The phase pinhole is, is only uh, effective on one orthogonal uh, polarization and the other orthogonal pol polarization is not affected by, by the phase pinhole and, and, uh, get, and we get from this beam, we get the other image. So the results of this project, we see here a regular finch when the 16 is in focus, we see, still see a uh, noise from the 
the object 18 and, and here the object 18 is in focus and we get noise from the object eight, eight, uh, 16, but after the scanning of the second SLM, only the 16 remains in focus and here only 18 remains in focus. And by that we can get, uh, achieve a sectioning and not just a regular a holograph holography uh, reconstruction. We move to uh, the next project in 2016 and 2017. We generalized the phase mask instead of displaying a diffractive spherical lens, like in the case of Finch, we put a three random uh, phase masks on the SLM and one uh, orthogonal polar polarization is affected by the phase mask, by the random phase mask and give us uh, the chaotic random uh, wavefront, the red one, and the other orthogonal polarization uh, gives the uh, plane wave the blue uh, wave front of a uh, plane wave, and the interference between them give us uh, the hologram of a coded aperture correlation holography. But in uh, 2017, we uh, discovered that to do three dimensional imaging, we don't need the interference between two waves. We can just use one one wave and still store the uh, three dimensional information of the object we also discovered later that we can do it with a single exposure and single uh, coded phase mask by using a nonlinear uh, reconstruction so let's see the, the process. Here we see the process of interference-less coded aperture uh, correlation uh, hologram. In the first step, we do a system calibration. We take one phase mask and create point response library or library of point spread functions. So we move one point along the z-axis and, and uh, we, uh, we uh, start collecting the library of, uh, of the point responses. And now with this library, we are ready to take, in the second step, uh, we are ready to record the object hologram, one exposure of an object, of a multiplane object, with the same phase match that we did the calibration. And the third step is image reconstruction in the computer. We take the object hologram and cross correlate it with all the member of the library, of the point response library. So in the first member, we don't get anything, but in the second member, we get one of the objects. So we know this object is located in the uh, distance corresponding to the second member of the library and so on. And we also uh, reconstruct the second uh, object. Okay, so now when we look on the uh, evolution from Finch to iCoach, so we started the Finch, with a superior uh, transverse resolution, and we used quadratic phase mask or a diffractive spherical lens. We general, generalized it to a coach with uh, using a coded phase mask, random uh, phase mask, and we, take, we took the interference between a plane wave and a chaotic wavefront. 
And then later we, we moved to interference-less coach. And, but this interference-less coach has a response instead of a chaotic uh, web front, we use here a randomly distributed uh, assemble of points. And this system coach and I coach has a superior axial resolution over a Finch. So our next project is to combine these ideas to one system that has transfer resolution of Finch and axial resolution of coach and I coach. And this is a system we published in 2000. 21, and we call it coded aperture with Finch intensity responses, Kafir. And here we create two sets of randomly distributed points. And the interference between them behave for the interference between every pair behave like a Finch. So we get by that, it, it violates the Lagrange invariant and we get the transfer resolution of each. On the other hand, because the points are distributed randomly, like in the interference-less coach, we get the axial resolution of the I coach and actually the axial resolution of a, a regular direct image uh, or lens-based uh, imaging. So let's see the results here. Here we compare Finch with direct image and, and Kafir. So we see here the three holograms of a point of a Finch, the object, three, uh, object hologram. After the superposition in the computer, we get a hologram of a point, hologram of an object, uh, and here we see the the point uh, holograms of uh, Kafir with three values of phase and the three hologram of the object of Kafir. Again, uh, the complex valued hologram after the superposition of a point and the object. And here are the three reconstruction direct image Kafir and Finch, and we can see that Finch and Kafir have better visibility of the grating than direct image. We can see it here in this graph, cross section uh, uh, along the, the grating, direct image is the blue line and it has less visibility than the red and green. The red is Finch, the green is Kafir and they have better, uh, better uh, visibility. And the axial resolution is measured by point response along the Z direction. In case Finch, Finch is wider than the other two methods, Kafir and direct imaging. So Kafir is better in axial resolution than Finch, and it, has a, it is better in transverse resolution that, uh, than the direct image. And here we see a reconstruction of two images. The gap between them is 10 millimeters. The 23 is in focus, and the outer focus is stronger in Finch than in direct imaging and in Kafir. And when the other image, the 20 is in focus, again, the autofocus of Finch is stronger than in the case of direct imaging and Kafir. So uh, the next project is something beyond the, 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 the uh, simple imaging. We call it depth of field engineering. We have subvolumes. In this example, two subvolumes. And we want separately or simultaneously to uh, image in focus 
all the objects that are in these two uh, subvolumes. And we also want, in case they are overlap each other, to be able to separate them transversely and see each one or together, but without uh, any overlap. So we add to this, uh, to over the, the regular the coded phase mass that we used before, we add here radial quartic phase function. The expression is given here. R is in power of uh, four. And by that, by this uh, new face mask, we can control the, the uh, length of the in-focus image. And we also uh, use a de facto spherical lens to create a Fourier relation between the camera plane and the aperture plane. And by this, by, by this, uh, because of this Fourier relation, we can use the Gershberg Saxton algorithm to design the uh, the, the coded, uh, coded phase mask. So here we see an example of a uh, multiplexing two sets of phase mask to control all the objects that are in two sub volumes. We add here a linear phase to each set in order to be able to separate them in case they are uh, overlap each other. So we see here the coded phase mask, the linear phase mask, the diffractive spherical lens, and the radial quartic phase uh, function. Uh, one set is uh, displayed on the black rings. The other set for the other subvolume uh, displayed on the white rings, and we get the overall final phase mask. And now to the results, we have here two objects that are overlap each other, and they they. And when the grating is in focus, the, the digit three uh, create noise of uh, out of focus image, but using our uh, technique of uh, depth of field engineering, we can only image one object. The grating that was here in the regular imaging was uh, in focus. We can see the other object with the digit three. And in the computer, by changing the parameter, we can see them uh, simultaneously. And they are separate. They, are, uh, not, they, they, they uh, do not overlap each other. And we can see each one of them without uh, the uh, noise of the other one. Next, with this uh, idea of a uh, radial uh, of uh, radial quartic uh, phase function, we can also do sectioning. So here, by the phase mask, we create instead of a regular focusing of a, a lens space uh, system, we create here a, a long focusing. A line and we tilt it by an angle of theta. So we have here two parameters, the length of the focusing uh, spot and or we call it intensity road. So we have uh, two parameters to control, the length of the road and the tilt of the road and we multiplex several uh, such intensity roads, each one with a different uh, angle. And now with this point response, when we have a second point, 
in a different axial position, all the set of the point response uh, moves forward. So now when we uh, put image sensor between these two sets, we get, we get two sets of points that we can distinguish between them. They create a different pattern and by a cross correlation, we can see only the black point or only the gray points. And when we have a complete image in the location of the, of the three, we can uh, cross correlate the response and extract only the digits three and eliminate the response of one, or we can extract the one and eliminate the three because each one create a different point spread function then uh, and can be uh, distinguished by, by the cross correlation. So here we see an example. Here we have a regular lens-based imaging. When three is in focus, we get hollow from the digit one, but with our method of sectioning, we can reduce the noise of the out of focus imaging. Here we extract this digit three, and here we extract the digit one. And also another example with partial occlusion and regular based imaging, we still see a strong uh, noise from the out of focus image, but with our method, we reduce the noise and see digit three here and the grating here. So uh, the next project from 2020, we can use coded phase, uh, coded uh, correlation uh, or uh, coach, okay? coded aperture correlation holography to do quantitative phase imaging. And for that, we display on the SLM the same coded phase mass that we saw before and add a reference a plane wave in a tilt of theta to record off axis hologram. And here we see the hologram. In the computer, we remove the grating that we get in on the off axis hologram and we get the image a multiplex on the point responses. And after the cross correlation, we get the a face image of the resolution chart. And when we compare it to a regular open aperture of axis hologram, we see that in the case of coach, coherent sparse coach, the noise is, is less than the open aperture and the accuracy of the step here using a 250 nanometer step uh, in the case of coach is more accurate. And if we want to do it uh, on axis system with a single exposure, we replace the random phase mask with a pinhole phase mask and the value of the pinhole is uh, half a pi here. We take here the, uh, the contra contrast, uh, phase contrast image, introduce it to uh, the computer, and by a modified gerber saxton algorithm, we get the, uh, the phase image. The constraints of the algorithm in this side is the measured intensity pattern, the constraints in, in the objects plane is the phase, uh, uh, the, 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 since the object is pure phase, so we, we, the constraint is to introduce once in the magnitude of the, of the uh, function in, in the object side, and 
the jump from, from the object and to the image plane goes through the correlation with the filter of uh, the a half a pi a phase spin that we put here in the algorithm. And we can see the results. In the first line, we see the uh, phase contrast input image of a 150 nanometer resolution chart and 250 nanometer step resolution chart. And after the algorithm finish, we get the uh, phase image. And here we have another example of uh, polystyrene uh, microspheres. And in E, we see what happened if we don't use the phase uh, pinol. We don't get anything useful. And here we see the results in comparison to uh, open aperture hologram. And in the case of the 150 nanometer, our method is closer than the hologram. And also in the case of the microspheres, uh, of the phase microspheres. And also the noise uh, is reduced by a, a three order of magnitudes after uh, 10 iterations. So it's a relatively uh, fast uh, algorithm. And here we see the results for the uh, reducing the, the the error for the three examples, experiment, experiments, uh, experimental examples, and for the simulation. And so my conclusions. Uh, my big conclusions uh, after all this journey of since the Finch through the coach and all the other uh, uh, advanced uh, projects is that we have to stay open-minded to many, many uh, ideas from different uh, fields. And we have to know how to connect these ideas and to make them uh, useful for our needs. And as a challenges for the future, I would say that uh, our group is going to work on uh, the issue of synthetic aperture with uh, incoherent uh, holographic imaging. It's still an open uh, problem. And also, we intend to improve the sectioning and tomography and to find new ways to do imaging through a scattering medium. And uh, finally, I would like to thank my colleagues and my uh, previous and present students for their com contributions to uh, our common uh, research. Thank you very much. <laughs>